Hello friends, welcome back to this series on MCQs on plant physiology paper from botany and today's topic of our discussion is uh, you can see on the screen ascent of sap. We have studied that physiological phenomenon which can be defined as the upward movement of water from roots to the tip of the plant against the force of gravity and against the friction caused by watering xylem vessels. So some MCQs we are going to test. You can use it for your self-evaluation. So you can see here this beautiful tree named Sequoia Simpervirens. Sequoia Simpervirens is the species. So what is the speciality of this plant is that this is the tallest plant of the world. This is the tallest tree of the world having a height of 115.5115.5 meters. And that is equivalent to 380 feet. So this is the tallest plant of the world. And for studying ascent of sap, you have studied two aspects are considered. That is the pathway of ascent of sap and the mechanism or the physiology of process or process of ascent of sap. So that is what are the forces that are responsible for carrying water in upward direction from lower side to upper side, from base to apex. Uh, so what are these forces that is studied under the physiology of ascent of sap or the mechanism of ascent of sap. And for that, different theories have been proposed from time to time by different scientists, which can be grouped into uh, theories like uh, your vital theories, physical force theories, uh, root pressure theory and your uh, cohesion water theory, which is also called as transpiration pull theory. But as per your syllabus, university syllabus, you have to study only one uh, theory that is cohesion tension theory. So we'll focus mainly on that theory. The questions will be pertaining to that theory only. So we'll begin very quickly. So let us begin with the first question. Uh, water moving in upward direction from roots to tip of plant is the water, which is pure water, is the water with dissolved organic substances. It is with dissolved inorganic substances, or it is the water with dissolved organic and inorganic substances. So you have studied ascent means the upward movement, and sap means the liquid, which consists of water in which some inorganic salts, some mineral salts are also dissolved in that water. It is not a pure water. It is not pure solvent, but it is water plus some mineral salts dissolved in that, and it is called as sap. So it is called as soil sap, soil solution. And that, um, and its upward movement is called as ascent of sap. So here the answer will be water with dissolved inorganic salts. Answer is option C. Okay. Next question. Which of the following is the tallest tree of the world? Just now we discussed. Uh, so these are some of the tallest trees. And here, Sequoia, Simpervirens, is the tallest plant of the world with height of 115.5 meters. That is equivalent to 380 feet. So D is the answer. Okay, the CT theory, CT, cohesion tension theory of ascent of sap was proposed by, so this is an important question. Curtis, Dixon, Jolly, Stewart, Levitt. So here, you know, the answer is Dixon, Jolly, not Jolly, Dixon Jolie. Jolie is the name of scientist. So these two scientists, uh, Dixon, Henry Dixon and John Jolie, uh, uh, were the two Irish scientists who proposed this cohesion tension theory, which is also called as transpiration pull theory. Dixon uh, was a botanist. He was a botanist and John Jolie, his friend, he was a physicist. So these two scientists were from two different disciplines, one from biological stream and another from physical stream. So Dixon was uh, concerned with the biological phenomenon, uh, living uh, phenomenon in the plant body, whereas his friend Jolie was concerned with the physical forces that are responsible for carrying water inside the plant body. And that resulted in a very good theory and that is called as cohesion tension theory or transpiration pull theory of ascent of sap. So here the answer is option B, Dixon and Jolie, who proposed their theory in 1894 and this theory was again modified by Dixon in the year 1914. So B is the answer here. Next question. 
which of the following is the most satisfactory, scientific, and widely accepted theory for ascent of sap? So as we know, there are different theories, vital theory, which can consider that some biological forces, living uh, forces are responsible for ascent of sap, whereas uh, physical force theory, atmospheric pressure theory is an example of physical force theory, which considers that some physical forces are responsible for what ascent of sap, whereas the root pressure theory is a combination of uh, vital and physical force theory. That is, the root pressure theory considers that uh, it is a biophysical phenomenon. It considers that some living activities are involved in the ascent of sap, as well as some physical forces uh, are like uh, root pressure, that is the accumulation, the pressure which set up in the xylem vessels due to accumulation of plant inside uh, the root by active water absorption, that is called as root pressure. So this is a combination of vital theory or uh, vital theory and physical force theory, living and non-living forces. But uh, these theories are not, uh, as, I, as I told, these are not uh, in your syllabus, so we'll not focus on that. Only one theory, that is CT theory or cohesion theory, is important, it is in your syllabus, and it is the most satisfactory scientific and widely accepted theory. It was accepted by different scientists, like your uh, Curtis, uh, then uh, Kramer, like that. Many scientists accepted this theory. So this is the answer. C is the answer, option C. The force of cohesion that you have studied, the attraction between similar molecules among water molecules is due to what? What type of bonding is there? Force of cohesion among water molecules is due to presence of hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds are not considered very strong bonds, but when their number increases, as in case of water, they become very strong. And it is assumed that the force of cohesion uh, among water molecules due to hydrogen bonding is about 350 atmosphere. Very, very high force is there. That means uh, this very high magnitude force is responsible for maintaining the continuous water column. Uh, and that, uh, in, in other words, we can say that the force or the magnitude of force more than 350 atmosphere is required to break the continuity of water column. So here hydrogen bonds or hydrogen bonding is the right answer. Cohesion is due to hydrogen bonding. C is the answer. The force of cohesion in water molecules is up to the magnitude of, just now I discussed, it is of the magnitude of 350 atmosphere very high magnitude. Option C is the right answer. There is force of addition, like uh, cohesion between uh, among water molecules, there is addition, that is the attraction between different molecules, water molecules and some uh, molecules of some other substances. Uh, like here in case of uh, xylem vessel wall, that substance is called as, for which water molecules are having um, force of attraction and these substances are called as lignin. You, you have studied the xylem tracheids and vessels, uh, they have primary cell wall made up of cellulose and secondary wall is deposited and it is made up of uh, lignin. That's why they become very thick walled, non-living dead elements. So here lignin is the answer. This is the substance which is having affinity with the water molecules and that force of attraction or affinity is called as adhesion. And due to this adhesion, which is uh, of magnitude of 50 atmosphere, the continuity of water column is maintained inside these hilum vessels also, hilum tubes also. So C is the answer here. Okay, again, the same question. The continuity of water column exists in hilum vessels due to what? So according to dixon jolly four points are important. Force of cohesion, force of adhesion, then continuity of water column and transpiration pool. So here, the question is, continuity of water column exists in hilum vessels due to force of cohesion as well as force of adhesion. So both A and B are involved. So C is the answer here. Okay. According to CT theory, cohesion tension theory, the driving force of ascent of sap, the force which is responsible for ascent of sap, according to this theory, it is called as the driving force. So this driving force for ascent of sap is whether it is respiration, transpiration, endosmosis, or exosmosis. So you have stated that the driving force responsible for ascent of sap as per Cohesion tension theory or cohesion theory, also called as transpiration pull theory, is the transpiration. So here, uh, B is the answer. According to according to Dixon Jolie, 1894-1914, the magnitude of transpiration pull or tension is up to how much atmosphere? So you have studied due to transpiration at the 
upper surface at the shoot level uh, there is a increase in the dpd of mesophyll cell and it creates a tension which is negative tension and it is called as transpiration pull and due to this transpiration pull the entire water column is uplifted in upward direction so this transpiration pull is responsible for ascent of sap and this transpiration pull is of the magnitude of 20 atmosphere so 20 atmosphere is the answer and it is a well known fact that with a pressure of one atmosphere water column can be lifted up to 34 feet uh, that is equivalent to 10 meters so so you see the calculation one atmosphere is responsible for lifting the water column up to 10 meters so two atmosphere it will lift the water column up to how much 20 meters and 20 atmosphere will lift the water column up to 200 meters so this force of 20 atmosphere transpiration pull is responsible for it can lift the water column in any plant up to 200 meters one atmosphere is equal to 10 meters so 20 atmosphere is equivalent to 200 meters so water can be uplifted up to the height of 200 meters inside the plant body and just now we have studied that the tallest plant of the world called as sequoia sempervirens it is having height of just 115 meters so this theory that's why is satisfactory because it, uh, it, it, men it mentions that water column can be lifted up to 200 meters inside the living plant. So C is the uh, answer here. Next question. The ascent of sap takes place through, well, uh, uh, the pathway of ascent of sap, it was not known previously, but nowadays it is a well-known fact that ascent of sap, that is the upward movement of water takes place through the xylem. And uh, when we consider xylem, there are two options, wall of xylem or lumen of xylem. So it is a well-known fact nowadays that the water travels through the lumen of the xylem, the cavity of the xylem, and not through the wall of xylem. So here, uh, C is the answer, and it has been uh, proved by paraffin blocking experiment that the lumen of xylem is uh, responsible for ascent of sap inside the plant body. So here, answer is option C. Next question. Okay, an instrument which is used to measure the small changes in the diameter, in the girth, that is the thickness of woody stem is called as what? So what happens, you know, uh, you, you have studied that uh, transpiration pull is responsible for ascent of sap and uh, the sap, that is the water which is present inside the xylem vessel, it is under tension. It is, uh, it is facing the tension from the upper side uh, that upper side tension is called as transpiration pull, as well as it has to face the tension which is coming from the downside, and it is called as gravitational pull. So it is facing, it is withstanding, it is resisting the tension from the upper transpiration pull, as well as from the lower side, that is gravitational pull. But uh, when, when the rate of transpiration is very high during daytime, so this uh, uh, sap which is present in the xylem, that water is... Uh, uh, is, is, is under tension and uh, mm -hmm. due to which these xylem vessels, they become narrower and ultimately the stem becomes somewhat uh, contracted. And when uh, during night time, there is no tension, then, then the stem again expands. So there is repeated contraction and relaxation of the stem. And this is called as diurnal variation in the thickness or diameter of the stem. And this instrument can use this uh, small changes in the diameter of woody stem and that instrument is called as dendrograph or dendrometer. So C is the answer here. Dendrograph can give you the record for small changes in diameter. So C is the answer here. Next question. Which one of the following is not an evidence of transpiration pull theory or cohesion tension theory of ascent of sap? So you can see which is not the evidence. So, well, it is known fact that the rate of water absorption and the rate of transpiration are approximately equal because uh, transpiration is responsible for water absorption. We have studied and that theory is called as passive method of water absorption. And it is also estimated that water absorption by passive method is the main method of water absorption in plants. Of the total water absorbed inside the plant body, 98% of water is absorbed by passive method and only 2% of water is absorbed by active method, osmotic and non-osmotic method of uh, water absorption. And here the rate of water absorption and transpiration are approximately equal. This is an evidence that transpiration pool is responsible for the ascent of sap as well as water absorption. 
just now I discussed the diagonal contraction and expansion of stem takes place, and it can be measured with the help of dendrograph. So here, this again, uh, this contraction and expansion is again due to transpiration pull. That is due to the tension which is uh, exerted by the xylem sap uh, during high rate of transpiration. Then another evidence is cut shoot. You have studied cut shoots. When uh, you uh, place these cut shoots in water, uh, uh, even in that case, they absorb water in absence of roots. Roots are not required. So this is again favoring the passive method of water absorption which uh, uh, takes place due to transpiration pull. And during the process, when there is transpiration, water is ultimately absorbed from the lower side. Uh, water is uh, lost from the upper side. Water is absorbed from the lower side. And in between these two processes, ultimately due to this transpiration pull, there is upward movement of water from roots to the tip of the plant body, and it is called as ascent of sap. So it was given by theory, CT theory, cohesion tension theory. So this is also the evidence. So all these three, one, two, three, are the evidences of transpiration pool theory. Okay, this is not the evidence. Expenditure of metabolic energy is required here because this is uh, not a vital process. This is not a biological process, or it is not dependent on the biological process uh, because cohesion tension theory is purely a physical process uh, in which uh, ascent of sap takes place due to physical forces like transpiration pull uh, of 20 atmosphere magnitude. And there is therefore no expenditure of metabolic energy required by the plant. So D is not the evidence. So which one of the following is not an evidence is asked. So D is the answer here. Option D is the right answer. Okay, which one of the following experiments is a demonstrative evidence? of CT theory, cohesion tension theory of ascent of sap in plants. The different experiments are there. Uh, balsam twig experiments, you must have studied that the balsam plant has having some semi-transparent stem and it is uh, uh, in, in this experiment, some uh, this twig is put in water containing some eosin drops so that colored sticks are seen flowing upward in upward direction due to ascent of sap. Uh, in ringing experiment, a uh, bark, in the form of a ring is removed. And in that case, it is observed that there is no wilting of roots. When we are removing the bark in the form of ring, that means we are removing the outer portion of the stem. That is, we are removing the phloem. Uh, xylem is keeping, uh, xylem is being kept intact in this case. So this experiment again suggests that uh, uh, xylem vessels are the water conducting tissues. Uh, balsam tree experiments also suggest that xylem is the pathway of ascent of sap. Similarly, Paraffin blocking experiment also suggests that xylem is the pathway of uh, ascent of sap. Especially the lumen of xylem is responsible for ascent of sap and not the wall of uh, xylem. Uh, only this experiment, porous spot experiment uh, is different. It is not suggesting, it is not only suggesting the pathway of ascent of sap, but it also suggesting that ascent of sap takes place due to cohesion tension theory. Because in this experiment, porous spot experiment, we uh, keep the porous spot at the tip of that um, potometer, which has been which is being dipped in water, uh, which is having uh, mercury at the very best, so that due to evaporation, the level of mercury rises. Similarly, instead of porous spot, if we keep the living plant twig there, then it will again show the same phenomenon of evaporation, and that is nothing but transpiration. Only the difference is that evaporation is a simple physical process, whereas transpiration is a physiological process. So porous spot experiment, it is, an, it is a demonstrative evidence of cohesion tension theory. Whereas the rest of the experiments are the experiments to demonstrate pathway. Xylem is the pathway of ascent of sap. So here the answer is, answer is B. Option B is the right answer. Okay. Next question. The process of rapid formation of bubbles in the xylem sap during ascent of sap, this process is called as process of formation of air bubbles is called as cavitation. Cavitation, it is called as cavitation. It is one of the back uh, drawback of city theory A. Okay, next question. The creation of an obstruction by an expanding large bubble in the xylem sap is called as what? When an obstacle is created due to formation of a large air bubble, which is formed due to uh, due to combination of many, many small air bubbles, it forms a large expanding large air bubble and, uh, and it, it acts as an obstruction, uh, air gap. So that process of formation is called as embolism. So it is uh, embolism, B is the answer. So cavitation is followed by 
embolism. And this is again one of the main drawback of your uh, CT theory, cohesion tension theory. Next question, the serious objection to the cohesion tension theory of ascent of sap is uh, what? So whether it is presence of uh, inorganic salts in the water column or release of waste products in the water column or formation of air bubbles in the water column. What is the serious objection? Okay, the main objection to the CT theory is formation of air bubbles. Right? That just now we discussed about cavitation and embolism. So C is the answer here. So this air bubble formation may obstruct the proper uh, upward movement of uh, xylem sap. So C is the right answer. Okay, the ascent of sap is affected by the factors which affect what? Okay, so ascent of sap is affected by both the factors, the factors which affect the process of water absorption, as well as the factors which affect the process of transpiration in plant body. Uh, we have studied in water absorption is affected by some external and internal factors, some exogenous and endogenous factor, some extrinsic and intrinsic factors like uh, uh, availability of soil water, then uh, concentration of soil solution, water, then uh, soil uh, temperature, soil aeration, as well as internal factors like transpiration, absorbing root system, like that. Transpiration is affected by various uh, external factors like light, temperature, wind velocity. So I, I like that, atmospheric pressure, atmospheric uh, humidity, uh, uh, and internal factors. So same external and internal factors which affect the process of water absorption and transpiration also affect the process of ascent of sap. So here the answer is C, both. Okay, the ascent of sap gets negatively affected. That means the rate is decreased. When rate is increased, the factors are said to be positively affecting the process. So here it is negatively affected if, so see the uh, options, whether it's dry, temperature is high, soil is saline, wind velocity is moderate. So what happens? If weather is dry, then what will happen? Transpiration, the rate of transpiration will increase. And just now we studied that ascent of sap is uh, related to the factors affecting transpiration as well as water absorption. So if weather is dry, tra more transpiration is there, so there will be more, to, more water absorption and therefore there will be regular ascent of sap. The rate of ascent of sap will increase in that case. If temperature is high, again, more transpiration, more ascent of sap. If wind velocity is moderate, then again, more transpiration and more ascent of sap. But if soil is saline, what will happen? There will be less water absorption and therefore there will be less ascent of sap. The process of ascent of sap will get negatively affected by this factor, soil in, if soil is saline. So C is the right answer here. Okay, okay next, next question. The rate, of ascent of sap, the rate of ascent of sap increases if, so see the options, if transpiration is high, yes, rate of ascent of sap increases because rate of uh, transpiration uh, give, uh, is responsible for transpiration pool and it is, it is an, uh, uplifting the entire water column. If the root system is extensive, of course, if the root system is extensive, there will be more water absorption. And when there is more water absorption, there will be more transpiration and therefore the rate of ascent of sap increases. If root pressure is high, that is if more amount of water is accumulated inside the xylem vessels due to active water absorption, uh, then in that case, there will be uh, more rate, uh, rate of ascent of sap. So this is again uh, responsible for increasing the rate of ascent of sap. So all these three factors are increasing the process of ascent of sap. So here the answer will be option D, all of these. So these were some of the questions from single chapter, ascent of sap. And these are the references, reference books. I used, utilized some internet sources also I uh, used. Okay, so my always uh, request to you to subscribe this channel and as always botany channel if you like these videos. And uh, if you are not already subscribed, then subscribe now and click the bell icon and you will get uh, notified for new educational video like videos like this one okay so up till now we are uh, we have covered from this mcq series on plant physiology uh, we have covered the videos on mcqs on water absorption process seed germination 
see dormancy and nitrogen metabolism. If you have not watched, then watch them, study them, uh, practice these questions, uh, use these as for your self-evaluation, as well as we are coming soon with some uh, topics from MCQ on photoperiodism and vernalization, as well as an important topic from uh, important topic on plant physiology that is transpiration or transpiration. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this patiently. Okay, I will stop sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.